identify, oh, yes, this is just like the church. Mm. And so they're happy with it. They're comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And they create a hierarchy within it, the way the Catholic Church has. And then uh, I don't know what made a difference, but certainly not the core philosophical differences that you and I are discussing here with Rupa and all the other people on the <clears throat> League for 10K. The, um, where, where, I mean, where is there a break between what they want and what they have already have? You know what I mean? Hello? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, I mean, what are they going to create that will be different than what they've already got? Yeah. Yeah. So what are the... Uh, I... It's like, you know, you create the problem in the same consciousness and then you try to fix the problem in the same consciousness. So how will there be any solution? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Very brilliant observation. <laughs> yeah, there has to be some, you know, higher authority or higher principles that you have to follow. If you don't know well, yes. what that is, then well, how can you actually come up to the solution? We would be we would be saying to the Catholics, it's time to drop Catholicism and approach Jesus as your uh, direct avatar, like Prabhupada. You know. Yeah, in in the case of Jesus, that's great, but you know, who knows how many? Well, times yeah, because we don't know anything about Jesus. And yeah. Jesus' teaching is scrambled up anyhow. Yeah, so that was my next point that, you know, that's a great idea provided all the teachings are exactly as it is, which was provided, you know, some 2,500 years ago whenever Jesus actually appeared. But these guys, these former Catholics or, or presently present Catholics in this gone form, um, they don't see that distinction. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's a miss, a miss point, you know, that's the greatest miss point to uh, think like that, you know, to think like, okay, Krishna, okay, Vaishnavism or Krishna consciousness or Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is similar to whatever they're thinking. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the religion in which they were raised. Yeah. So, uh that's the you know that's the difficulty here because people are born in different you know cultures backgrounds and all of them come together in ISKCON and they've not given the bona fide teachings of Srila Prabhupada they've given this hijacked version you know and uh, they don't know what to do I mean classic example is Sacramento you you seen Sacramento you know you you came yeah. here stayed a few days and you have exactly. experiences in Los Angeles you know, what's the difficulty here? I mean, obviously there is because, you know, people, I'm, I mean, from my, you know, very meager experience, uh, you know, just a few years, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not very blissful, you know, hanging out with them and doing activities with them because their understanding is so constipated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no, uh, you know, higher So you have the problem principles. of the impacted and traditional and degenerated to the single point Hindu beliefs, which are becoming less and less Vedic in India and more and more cultural or more and more religiously cultural. And then you have the other side, which is the Catholic Church having taken over the GBC, mainly that the GBC emulating the Catholic Church, even the saying the uh, highest ecclesiastical authority of this gun is the GBC. I mean, how can they do that without it being 
without red faces, you know? Because yeah, because they <laughs> they have no understanding of Srila Prabhupada's teachings, first of all, and probably they have some material motive. I know. If right? they could have said Prabhupada is the highest ecclesiastical authority of his kind, that started. they would be correct. Absolutely right, yeah. But they never said that. They, well, the GBC yeah. did everything they could. Well, what they said in Rupa, do you remember what they said? Uh, at one point, somebody made a letter or a conversation where they said to Prabhupada, you sit tight and write books and we will run the movement. Do you remember huh. that? I've heard it referenced, but I don't remember reading it myself. Okay. Well, that's what they try to do, you know, this, uh, what, uh, apparently they locked up. That's what they did during the, um, yeah. during the BBT lawsuit is that they said, yeah. writer for hire. Yeah, that was. In other words, Prabhupada is working horrifying. for us. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, mean, how could they do it? Well, they did it. They did it, yeah. So, um, a very... Really, Anyways, um, whatever has been well, done, he, has been done, you know? So, out of ignorance or out of envy or out of whatever, you know, conceptions they have, they have done it or misunderstanding. But people should get the right understanding, right? If they get the right well, understanding. I don't, think they, I don't think they had a single misunderstanding. Their misunderstanding oh. was that Prabhupada was the supreme authority coming from Krishna Loka. Prabhupada's Ooh. view on the topic Who's was, these are the, there's a sinister movement within our society of people who do not accept Krishna consciousness as it's being taught by Prabhupada. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they do not understand. So you're saying they do or understand. They, or they do understand that they disagree. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I said, you, you know. So that's what I was going to say, that either they understand or they don't understand, or they understand, but they disagree. They have they their un understanding. They, they understand just fine, but they go against Prabhupada so that they can take his seat. Oh, then that means they're trying to hijack Prabhupada's movement or, you know, take his place. Well, or they hijacked place. it in 1970. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine that's really... Prabhupada's difficulty in dealing with them for... The, the, the seven years after 1970 until they murdered him. Yeah. But I don't know uh, if you were following my inter exchanges with Bobby Hebert, but I kept on saying, Tamal, T why are you accepting Tamal's word over Prabhupada's word when Tamal murdered Prabhupada in that same sp span of time? Why are you accepting Tamal's word Ritvik? And have you never questioned why did he pick that word? Oh, it means the same thing. Oh, it's the same thing. There's a, you're just an envious, crazy guy. You're a has-been. You're uh, mentally retarded or whatever they're saying about <laughs> these two be. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple math that if the spiritual master speaks and somebody else speaks, if you're a disciple of the spiritual master, you accept what he says, not what the other guy says. Oh, that is the same thing. Ah, well, what the right. hell are they coming from to say that, you know? Where can yeah, they possibly be coming from to say that Prabhupada, I mean, it, it, what it does is it puts them, the so-called Ritviks, in a higher position than Prabhupada and Tamal. Oh, it means the same thing. So we accept that we have our own view. We accept all of that, you know. So why are you objecting to me? Is that I'm objecting because it's not what Prabhupada said. Hmm. And if if we go by what Prabhupada said, that is going by what our spiritual master said, who gave us initiation and to whom we owe our life and soul. Yeah. At what point do we not owe Prabhupada in life and soul? You see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, let's, you know, if people will look at our personal lives, where we come from, you know, it's pretty depressing to think that, you know, if we continued in that way with our Chila Prabhupada, 
you know, coming in our lives. It would be disastrous. Uh, you know, it's just well, unthinkable. It's absolutely, yeah, unthinkable. it's absolutely yeah. required. Basically, when the um, disciple accepts initiation, he is supposed to accept his spiritual master as his life and soul. Yeah. Not as a launching pad life or boat. reference point. Or, or a lifeboat. <laughs> lifeboat, yeah. No, not like that. Yes, exactly. Okay, you know, I, I mean, it's I, not I, like you're in I, college and you listen to your professor, you're going to get your PhD from your professor, but you have a plenty of latitude to do, have a different view than your professor. It's like in uh, the case of a that, spiritual master, if he is your spiritual master, you have zero latitude to disagree. Today I have one lifeboat, tomorrow I have another lifeboat, the next day I have another lifeboat. Right. You know? uh, or, or, or uh, you know, whatever you call it. So that changing, it's, uh, I mean, the look at it in, in Los Angeles, how many people have had mon multiple fall down gurus? You know, they, they, I mean, in your area of expertise. Oh, Los wow. tons of them. <laughs> you know, so Rupa and I have a friend, God sister named yeah. uh, Jagambika. And she went yeah. through three or four gurus. Yeah, so uh, so what, do, you know, these people are chanting Hare Krishna 16 rounds very faithfully, reading Prabhupada's books, but why are they getting this misunderstanding? What's What's the reason why? Because that's what is they're the, told. They're, is it, is it, they is, believe is that it what their they're being told is, is authorized. And our job is to demonstrate that it's not. Now, yeah. how close to being able to cut the GBC off at the root can we be at this point? Does the GBC have even the slightest legal right to refer to themselves as No, GBC? absolutely not. Absolutely not, sure? because, yeah, because I recently saw the 1976 edition of ISKCON bylaws that was uh, stamped and uh, um, filed in San Francisco or wherever their recorder's office is. And they said that they will follow the direction of management, which they never did. So, I mean, if you really take them to court and spend you know, thousands and you know maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, they will be like, oh yes, we actually did not follow okay, this. Okay, but if they say that, then does their house of cards come falling down? Well, the cards is already falling down because people no, are questioning. Not falling down. I'm talking about in terms of this. You say the GBC's house of cards has already fallen down? I yeah, think they're because... still in charge of this gun, aren't they? Well, if you uh, in charge in a sense, they're you know fooling people. Uh, yeah, you can say I guess they're in charge. Well, yeah, in, in sure, that. fooling people into thinking that they are authorized by Prabhupada, presumably. Yeah. Where yeah. did they get the permission to exist without being authorized by Prabhupada? That's what they're. Uh, that's uh, that's the bluff, right? The ordinary. Well, common obviously, man, yes. So the ordinary. Our Ordinary job folks, they is don't to have make it, intelligence. It's, isn't our job to make it absolutely clear that the GBC has no legal relationship to ISKCON any more than if the mafia comes into your pizza parlor and takes it over and runs up debts on it and, and makes money with it and opens branches of it. And at the same time, they're not you. They, they can't do that to you. Your pizza parlor, they can, they've taken it over illegally. Yeah, that's very simple. So they take it over ISKCON illegally, right? Yeah, they just use the word. So how can that be, commission. but we need, how do we go about not proving it to you and me, but how do we prove it to the world? To the, yes. You know, it has been our experience, at least in your experience for the past, I don't know, 67 to 2020. Hardly people understand these issues, even your guard brothers who joined during your time. So well, can we expect matter. the masses? 
I mean, can can we expect the masses of people to understand, or well, not we, not if we don't understand. No, like for example, you have understood these issues. You have talked to your brothers about it, and uh, what has been the result? How have the masses understood it? Well, my question to you. Because it's not that simple. It's not that easy. It's not that conversational. We have to get. <laughs> remember what I was suggesting is that we get together in a a huge list of crimes on a like a, a giant wall-sized piece of paper, put down every single thing they've done, every single person that's done it, and starting from 1970 onward, all the crimes that were there unrelated to ISKCON. None of these crimes by the GBC have anything to do with ISKCON, right? Yeah. That's where we have a problem with Bobby Hebert. Bobby Hebert no, thinks it's all one thing and we have to get rid of all of it. And he has nothing to replace it with. How can that be? Because Iskand is Prabhupada's movement. He started it. He's the founder Acharya. So if we take him to be the absolute authority and we uh, establish our own movement, then you know why are we claiming to be his disciples or followers of his? Does it make sense? Yeah. So Bobby Hebert was busy attacking me here, right, left, and center aided by Paranjan and a bunch of other people. One guy actually got racist and accused me of being a, that my the problem of my ideas is that I was a Jew. Can you imagine? And Bobby Hebert jumps on board with him, supporting him. Interesting, well. Yeah. Uh, Mohit, Mohit is asking to be let in. Oh, well, why, don't, why isn't he in? Oh, I guess I, I'm panicking. I'm not looking at the screen. Okay. I thought I saw he's coming in. picture. Oh, he was here and he, okay, he's here now. Joy. Great. So, uh, so, yeah, so these things need to be very simply put, you know, uh, the more simpler, the better. A lot of people. I've noticed well, simple and least... better in principle, it's very easy. Yeah. The GBC has no legal connection with ISKCON or Srila Prabhupada. No, let, let's make it clear here that the GBC, which they have established, is not the GBC that Prabhupada had established. There was never the, any other GBC than the one that they have right now. Yeah, so right? yeah. Because they never accepted even one election. Just look at the difference between these guys lording it over with millions of dollars in Mayapur versus a temple president who is elected to be a GBC, uh, one of 12 GBCs to go around and help people open temples, then going back to being a temple president, not an overlord or warlord of some sort, certainly not a person cashing in. Yeah, look at this uh, Vaisheshika. You know, he's a good devotee, but look what he's doing. You know, he, he could have been one of the leaders of the movement. He could have helped people. But when I asked him for help to establish a temple, he, he just, uh, you know, even though I was going to do I know, but the thing is, it never came to that, you know. It never, never came even close to that. Yeah. So Because yeah. they never had even one election. Yeah, if they had so had one election or five elections or ten elections and then let it go, at least they would have had a track record of having had elections to elect GBC. But they never had even one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they never had even one, it means that the GBC that they claim to be, they shouldn't call themselves GBC. They yeah, should that's be called something else. Yeah. The yeah. They could call themselves the mafia <laughs> because that's what they're yeah. really doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So do you see what I'm saying? Is that they, to overturn this, we have to make it absolutely clear of the difference between the GBC and ISKCON. I was hoping that Bobby Hebert would see that. Now you said Bobby Hebert 
is not altogether against this gun. No, it's not. That's news to me because he was seen that way when he talked to me. Huh. Anyways, um, uh, anyway, Rupa, was fun. you wanted to share. Sure, you wanted to share something, Prabhu. Uh, yeah, do you have something the in is, the email? Yeah, Rupa, do you have it? Um, have what? That paper oh. that we were going over that you sent me a copy of. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I sent okay. you. You, you sent, sent me I a sent... paper, and I said, "Why don't we use it for the Zoom call?" Actually, we wanted to use it for the Zoom call yesterday. But remember, you sent me. I asked you to send me something on the Bakvinod Takur. Right? I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Bakvinod Takur. Remember, there was a paper, and you sent me a copy of it. Let me check my okay. sent messages. All right. Why don't you check for your last okay, email to me? Okay, uh, let's see here if there's any questions from devotees online or YouTube. Yeah, but the, the situation is, don't we need to create, and this is what I was hoping Bobby Hebert would be doing, is to create a distinction between the innocence of this con and the guilt of the GBC. What do you think? I'm not finding a email on Bhaktivinod Thakur that uh, I sent. Um, did you, did you, did you, what was your last email? What was the last okay. email that you sent me? Do you have a record of it? January 23rd. That was a long time ago. The last email that you sent me was a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. So, Good night, anyhow, so, here. Bobby, so Bobby Heber took a lot of exceptions with pretty much everything I said. And so what I said was, find something that you don't like about what I wrote and challenge it instead of saying, oh, you're wrong, oh, you're wrong, oh, you're wrong, without, uh, without citing a single... Thing that you think is wrong. So he said, okay, how about you're saying that Krishna, the that ISKCON comes from Krishna Loka? That's, a, that's supposed to be my big blunder of saying that ISKCON comes from Krishna Loka. I said, Srila Prabhupada, Krishna is in Krishna Loka. Prabhupada is the transparent via medium for Krishna and Uttamadakari in Krishna Loka. Therefore, if pra Prabhupada bring, creates ISKCON, then ISKCON is created in Krishna Loka. He dropped it like a hot potato. Yeah. How can we say that something that the spiritual master creates is different than the source from where he comes from? You know what I mean? Well, uh, I I have an Maybe. argument for that. I said okay. I have an argument for, for well, that. So I'm a, I will cite that passage from Srila Prabhupada's letter. Srila Prabhupada's letter, February 9th, 1969. You're saying that ISKCON is in Krishna Loka, right? The no, institution? It comes from Krishna Loka. Oh, comes from comes from Krishna Loka. Okay. It comes from Prabhupada who comes from Krishna Loka. Okay, it comes from, okay. So Prabhupada is saying here in a letter that regarding your other questions, Lord Jagannath does not have his own planet. The whole spiritual world is a manifestation of the spiritual energy of Krishna. So Subhadra or Radharani, they are spiritual energy of Krishna, but there are varieties of different forms of that energy. That's all. So, so what has I got to do with like, it's called coming from Prabhupada who came from Krishna Loka. No, I'm I'm saying maybe Bobby Hebert is understanding 
that this the institution is represented in Krishna Loka. No, that's what I said. I said Prabhupada the, came from Krishna Loka, bringing ISKCON with him as his manifested organization. It's, in other words, it's not a material organization created by materialists, or as Basta Ghosh was saying, oh, that's just for hippies back in the 60s, you know? So let's, uh, so, so let's make the resolve, point clear. Can we resolve this point? Yeah, let's discuss it from different angles. So what are you saying? We understand that Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada's movement is a spiritual movement because it's not based on the bodily conception of life, right? Right. So Correct. that's there. So now talking about the institution now, the institution intrinsically is a spiritual institution because it's dealing with spiritual... It, can we call it an institution? Well... A spiritual movement, then, or what do you want to call it? What word do you want to use it? How we want to? A spiritual shelter for jivas is one thing you could call it. Okay, spiritual shelter for jivas. Okay, so it's a shelter, right? So, is that yeah. same shelter there in the spiritual world? No, but it's from the spiritual world. Okay, yeah. So let's make a distinction. It's here. like is it's from... is Prabhup is Prabhupada initiating his disciples, initiating them in the spiritual world? Or does he initiate no. them here? Here. In the spiritual right. world, everything is Satchirananda. Everyone is already exactly. so, liberated souls. But we can understand that by initiating anyone in this material world, that person is guaranteed to go back to Godhead because Prabhupada has put himself yeah. torturously on the line to take them back to Godhead. Yes. So maybe that distinction is not clear with Bobby Hebert. He's probably thinking something else. You might need to have more discussion. No, what he's thinking is ISKCON is a material organization and that it can be replaced with some other organization with equal value. Uh, absolutely not. Because Yes, exactly. And I disagree with that completely, right? Yeah, I mean, that that would make Prabhupada imperfect living being, not able to, you know, help yeah. people or take people back well, to God. Because the way Bobby Hubert has been operating as a GBC and God knows what else, uh, and that rhetoric or whatever, that Bobby Hubert has created a, um, he has created a sense that ISKCON is a material church, like the Catholic Church, and that that church can be changed or eliminated and replaced with maybe like a no, Protestant I, church. I, 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 I disagree with that because okay. when I had a conversation with, with him, he said, we are restoring ISKCON and, you know, putting, uh, getting the original documents and publishing it and these things. So. He's Why not did trying he to tell replace me that he that Iskon had to I, be destroyed then. Iskon is probably saying I, he's probably saying that about Krishna. yes, go ahead, Prabhu. Follow. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam, Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, I Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Nana. Yeah, follow, follow, follow. Sure. I want to add here one thing, bro, that uh, when you say that Bobby Heber was saying something, I mean, same I, when I go to other temples, right? They say that we are restoring Prabhupada's uh, original scripts. We are restoring what he wanted, the Guru Parampara, and I mean, various other things. I mean, for new people, who, those who are coming in and out, right? For them, I mean, understanding what we are talking is a very big thing, right? So, I mean, how do we get them into the original ESCON uh, formation? Exactly. Prabhupada wanted, yeah. That's but they say question. that they... They show, I mean, in Eskon uh, Vindavan, they show the original manuscripts of Prabhupada, right? Prabhupada Samadhi is there, Prabhupada, everything is there, right? So, uh, I mean, many people say this, that they are restoring it. And those people, those who are against them, they are like, I mean, as exactly and material world, they are not accepted. I mean, they are saying that you are doing a wrong thing because this is, uh, organization is made by Prabhupada. How can you say you can say that they're like 
an organization and corporation. So, yeah. So if we look at this kind of simply a material corporation like a church, then we are in agreement with the GBC and in agreement with the right, people yes. that are busy taking all the money from ISKCON. Right. But if we say that ISKCON is a principle by which, okay, what, okay, L let me only say what I think ISKCON is. And that is, I see ISKCON as being a platform, Kanista Adhikari platform, where the four regulated principles are being followed, where the prasadam is being distributed to devotees and to others, where classes are given morning and evening, where kirtan is there, where hopefully sankirtan is going out into the streets every night, day or night, and uh, where the deities are worshipped. That is ISKCON. Okay. I don't see ISKCON as being a thing that in itself, ISKCON is the sum of its parts, which is the parts being, what do you think, Ramachandra? This gun is the sum of its parts, meaning the Kanista Adhikari platform, all these things. When a person comes in off the street and joins Iskan, what do they do? They chant 16 rounds, they shave their heads, they wear a sika, they wear a saffron cloth or white cloth, whatever. Does it make sense, Ramachandra, Prabhu? Can you make it simpler? No, it and makes sense, but. I mean, you're not, I mean, when you, when a person who's a new in Krishna consciousness, right? <coughs> sorry, sorry. Who's new, who's just come there, right? And who's been like, just not come, I mean, six months later when he gets to know that Prabhu, this, these things are happening, right? But then, uh, I mean, in front of him, the image is kept like, we are preserving what Prabhupada said. Oh. Prabhupada said this exactly the same as it is. How can you... Right. Uh, and well, he's his taken books, up. He's his up. books are pretty clear. His lectures are absolutely clear. His kirtans are clear. What part is not clear? The only clear the part that's not clear is the GBC putting their dirty little fingers all over it. So no, he's trying to make it into a business for themselves, which is profitable and controlling. So if they, I mean, if they want this to happen, why are they? Why are they showing it as uh, Prabhupada's movement? Just show it as like our, what we wanted. I mean, how they, how they want it. No, then no one more what? what? Go ahead. I mean, Prabhu, then, then it's like offending your guru indirectly, right? You're offending the words of your guru. So uh, then uh, your spiritual life way? is all done. They, they are offending every aspect of Prabhupada. Because they're using Prabhupada the way Christians use they take Christ, show him on the cross, have, show blood running all over his body, show crown of thorns on his heads, and say, watch out, dude, that could be you. And for mm -hmm. example, if you go against so them, obey then they go out the church. Obey the church. Do not say, love your neighbor. What well, they love their neighbor? The first thing, the first, the first, the first Constantine, the first Pope of Rome, used his new Catholicism to go out and kill 10,000 people in battle. That's how he considered himself to be a Christian, proved himself to be a Christian by killing 10,000 people in battle, not by turning the other cheek. Got your point, Prabhu. But the point is, if you just say something against them, they'll throw you out of the organization. I mean, I mean, if they get to know this, you'll be kicked out. So then then we don't have any option just to, I mean, those are well, like very... Well, no, no, I'm not suggesting that we go there and throw, challenge them to their faces. I'm saying we need to work behind the scenes to recognize that ISKCON is Prabhupada, not different than Prabhupada, and that the GBC does not exist in reality. Well, well, if you're working yeah. behind the scenes, it's impossible to change people, right? To give them exactly what they wanted. You have to be blunt and open and straightforward how Prabhupada was in his times, right? He never used yeah, well, to... What I, mean, think... but I don't know, quite understand what you mean. If can, what, what if we can prove that the GBC has no legal basis for existence? 
first of all uh, i mean prabhupada always wanted every temple to be separate right separate legal entity and everything right not exactly. under a, under a exact control that's the yeah. basic that's the basic rule other things i should i think that automatically when you chant uh, the holy name right when you take mercy of prabhupada prabhupada will do it right he will clear out all the material things which are inside of kanishta adhikaris right that will happen that's the process how you become a devotee that's the thing but the point is if you give yeah. a separate legal entity to every temple but but, but you can do that on that. the kanishta adhikari platform without having a gbc the way we have it exactly exactly half of the point is done then half of the problem is done right the, 50% yes. of the problem is done in the temple the three quarters yeah. of the problem is a cancer called the gbc exactly that is busy exactly. eating if you are a healthy athlete and you have a 40 pound tumor in your stomach mm. all your food mm. that you eat is going into feeding the tumor not according to feeding to your athletic body exactly. so we should keep a class or an episode type of a thing on how a temple is made how a temple is a separate legal entity and how it is function how prabhupada wrote it we can make yeah. a i mean class on this that's very important bro because and these people if you have, have to got this, 20 yeah. or 30 temples how you can elect a gbc exactly to help those temples the whole point of the gbc is they are the servants of the temples not the masters of the temples exactly so propad never wanted this corporate organization type of a thing no. that one single entity is handling he was scared of this he was always scared that this would happen and he always told that well, i have never would happen he said it at the before he created the gbc he said there's a sinister movement within our society yes what is that sinister movement he said specifically he outlined he said there are people who are not surrendering to krishna but they want to be in charge and in control well that's obviously the people that were meant to be elected to be gbc but who refused to be elected to be gbc the first 12 were people that didn't want to be elected they wanted yes. to be in charge they wanted to be in control they even i said earlier there's even a either a paper or a conversation or a paper a letter or they devotee said to prabhupada you sit tight and translate books and we will run the movement they told prabhupada that in 1970 mm. how can you tell your spiritual master sit tight and translate books and we'll run the movement it's when they have mm. already given up their idea that they are a disciple whoever mm. became the gbc that were not elected which means all of them were no longer disciples they were not what do you think ramachandra do you agree um uh, can you say that again narayan no, no, prabhu i was typing something in the group oh okay that whoever became what was i said rupak do you recall what i just said no sorry Okay, Mohit, well, what did I just say? I, <laughs> I made, I made Sorry. everything. Sorry? I destroyed everything. <laughs> I, I was saying that the whoever became the GBC, GBC had already yes. understood that they did not want to be elected and they did want to be in control of the movement in spite of the fact that Prabhupada was the spiritual master. Now when you take initiation from a pure devotee spiritual master any spiritual master or would speak of pure devotee spiritual master when you take initiation from the spiritual master you give your life and soul you don't mm. disagree with the spiritual master you don't disobey the spiritual master you don't chant melodies that are different than the ones chanted by the spiritual master you emulate the spiritual master you follow in the walk in the footsteps of the spiritual master You know this is something which is almost impossible for most devotees to understand right <coughs> Yeah because they're so used to iskon being unrelated to prabhupada 
<laughs> unrelated to pro but that's the class wow. very cool. <laughs> what, point where, blank and target where, 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 where is the question of obedience to pro but it is gone there's no obedience because it's uh, they're not obedient to pro but so absolutely that not. means that without that obedience it's impossible for this movement to progress yeah the first principle is obedience to the spiritual master when the spiritual master is some guy that came in such a two years before you initi- yeah he came in <laughs> he's been here for 20 30 years and now he's a guru that spiritual master is different but when the spiritual master descends from krishna loka that means your your chance of going back home back to godhead depends on that spiritual master jai hari bol that's yeah, a very valid point yeah. yeah and if people think it's not dependent on that spiritual master then they have already decided that they don't care about going back to godhead yeah do you think those gbc those first gbc 12 gbc cared about going back to godhead they probably didn't even know what was godhead anyways <laughs> <laughs> They, they had been preaching Christian consciousness. Preaching is one thing, you know. I, I can preach. You can preach. Yeah, but they, but they made a format of leadership which was completely devoid of obedience to Prabhupada. It was completely... Essentially what they did, and even when the GBC was created, they brought in a Treya Rishi to be a, a, a oh, yeah. economic... wizard from an Iranian and he had been in Iran uh, uh, during the time of the Shah and they brought him in to organize this, the GBC into an organization of powerful dictators independent from Prabhupada leaders their view was Prabhupada knows about Krishna consciousness chanting Hare Krishna and all that, and he's from India, but he couldn't possibly know about American economics in a, a, an American corporation, corporate structure. So when we say, let's do corporate structure, and Prabhupada said, let's not, he's wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, if a spiritual master is on, coming from Krishna, how do you say that he is wrong without completely dooming yourself to hellish planets? <laughs> yeah. The spiritual It's master like, is never wrong. Yeah, the Uttama right? Rikari, yeah. Right. And descending from He well, said yeah. Uttama Rikari. Uttama Rikari means he is on the same level as Krishna in Krishna Loka. We've gone through that Kanista Madhyam Uttama Rikari. How you come up to the Uttama Rikari platform is when you have a reciprocal relationship with Krishna. And then you come under the protection of yoga maya and you can see krishna face to face and your relationship with krishna from that point onward is a mutual exchange relationship not master and servant relationship hmm. hari bol prabhu yes. i wanted so to add something it was something go ahead mean, it's something personal but yeah i need to address it uh, yeah i mean i just came back to my hometown uh, two days back and i was chanting so in the temple during the mangala aarti and i was still 10 10 am so i mean when i was chanting prabhu it was i mean automatically coming that i've i've missing something very importantly and those tears out of my eyes was coming i mean so i mean prabhu if someone is chanting so purely i mean i think that if you doing quality chanting and if you doing it from your heart why is this like all this sinister movement coming out i mean if coming from the heart automatically prabhu automatically well, it depends, you know if i don't Shravan, understand Shravan that. it's based do you agree that with everything is based on shravanam hearing kirtanam exactly. chanting yeah yeah or yeah, shravanam yeah. means hearing from prabhupad not hearing from some guy that was initiated in 1980 me no it's not about hearing bro it's about your heart right if your heart is like i mean it's giving signals that you should go for krishna consciousness and it's giving you a pure yeah but what I is mean, krishna 
Are you saying you can have Krishna consciousness without Shravana? For no, the I'm not saying this. I'm okay, not saying this. Saying? Because Krishna is inside your heart, right? Prabhu Krishna is inside your heart. If you call him, if you're calling him with your pure, with pure intentions, he will reciprocate with you, right? He will give you directions to go to which guru and how to uh, go ahead with Krishna consciousness. Oh, so my so point was, was Prabhu, okay. everyone starts this process like this, right? Everyone who is becoming a devotee, he, was, he starts like his process oh. like this only. So why is this organization and then how is this big, big sinister movements going on, right? I mean, Because they want power and money. Money and power. They don't I mean, care my, about surrendering to Krishna. Money they don't want to surrender to Krishna. Essentially, they want Krishna to surrender to them. So, bro, if you're chanting purely, how can uh, this, these things can come but they're up? They're not right? chanting purely. They're chanting with, with consciousness of mechanized consciousness how to control others. That's not the mood of a devotee. So basically, you're trying to bifurcate that their mind is a problem, right? They're not chanting it purely. They're thinking of... Their mind, their heart, their destiny, their previous birth, whatever you want to say. They took, yeah. birth, to, they took birth to cheat Prabhupada. But Prabhu, they, their previous lives, I mean, we can't just judge like this. They have their previous life, right? Some portion of devotion should be there, right? Which, which, which was pure, that's why they yeah, joined well, sure. Eskon, right? Kanista Dakari means millions of areas where you can make a mistake. In other words, that I, Kanista Dakari that's, all, means, that's well, okay, bro. That's, okay, how that's many authorities point. do, how many spiritual authorities do we have? Um, we have only one. Right. And where does that spiritual authority come from? Prabhupada. Well, yes, but where does Prabhupada come from? Prabhupada comes from uh, Krishna Loka. Yes, which means yeah. that Prabhupada and Krishna are on the same platform, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Bro. That's for the, sure. Yeah. Krishna is not, Prabhupada is not Krishna and Krishna is not Prabhupada. But in Krishna Loka, let me just say, there are unlimited jivas there in their rasas with Krishna. They're all on the same platform as Krishna. Only when you leave Krishna Loka is a change made between being here in the material world and being in Krishna Loka. People in the material world have already separated themselves from being their sense of being part and parcel of Krishna. If you are part and parcel of Krishna in reality, you're not going to ever have any way to disagree with Prabhupada even slightly, right? Exactly, bro. So my point was if you if you are pouring your heart on the Hare Krishna moment, right? If you're pouring your heart on the Hare Krishna mantra. You're doing it purely. These things won't ever come in your mind, bro. Because, uh, I mean... Well, it's, but we have to take into account that we, our senses are important. But Ramachandra, were you saying something? Bro, is not there. He's not there, bro. Ramachandra, are you there? He's left the, he's left the meeting, bro. Why? Uh, maybe some issue. We have Vinayak, bro. Aribol, Jai. Dhanwar Pram, bro. Oh, Dhanwat Pranam, Sri Narayan Prabhu, Mohit Prabhu, Rupman Jai Mataji, and one is Zoom user, maybe Ronald Prabhu. So is Ramachandra coming back to the meeting? He's in charge of it tonight. He put me in yes, charge yes. and he didn't say that he was leaving or any word of explanation. Vinayak Prabhu, what's your point of view? You're the secretary of... Oh, <laughs> I'm... <laughs> You're Ronald Prabhu's secretary, I'm, no? I'm no one here. <laughs> Are you both? How's Japan going, bro? How's preaching going there? How's, how's it yeah, been going? Yeah, Japan, like uh, recently, our like uh, former prime minister got uh, shot. And, uh, Achha. Oh. Yeah, quite rare to see in Japan, like leaders being shot in public. Achha. 
and uh, yesterday prabhu like i noticed this uh, yesterday i was uh, discussing some history of uh, like religious history of japan and uh, we might have some uh, analogies within our movement from that history that uh, i w- i wished to discuss and uh, you also might find it interesting uh, so so you are here narnan prabhu so uh it it's regarding like uh, world war 2 when uh, like both the world wars 1 and 2 like uh, japanese emperor that time was meiji and uh, they used they used this term they used to have this term that uh, japanese emperor is like a god or uh, god himself and uh, they preached uh, that thing uh, so widely in japan that everyone believed that our emperor is uh, like a god and uh, serving and uh, dying for the emperor gives you nirvana or liberation and uh, this thing was very prevalent within everyone and uh, this theory was uh, popularized within japan that uh, japanese people are god's own people and uh, japanese uh, emperor is uh, himself god so japan would always win and uh, japanese are the best among all the men and japanese uh, people can never lose and this thing was too much uh, like uh, forced into the minds of japanese people so this thing happened that uh, when they lost the world war 2 it was very difficult for many people to realize that they have actually lost and uh, nobody believed in the first place so that time like uh, before that japanese emperor did uh, spend a lot of money for uh, ritualistic religious practices to bless the weapons bless the army men and everything but uh, nothing worked out and uh, they all lost later the emperor himself came down and he apologized to all the public and himself told everyone that i am not god and uh, he went to he traveled all over the japan he met he every every wherever he went he had held the apol- apology uh, speeches in which he declared that he is not god and uh, people were so much disgusted by hearing this that uh, you are not god and uh, yeah after that people got too much disgusted that they started hating any kind of religious system because before that like uh, japanese soldiers they did like uh, kamikaze it's very popular term for uh, suicidal aeroplanes by japanese soldiers that they used to fly the aeroplanes and they used to crash that in american ships and uh, they used to think that if i am uh, chanting the name of my emperor before dying like this then i will get liberation and uh, japanese people were so much disgusted by these dis- declarations of their god like emperor that uh, they started hating any form of religion after that and uh, what yeah, year same, what year uh, did did he tell them that he was not god yeah after they lost the world war 2 oh so that might be 1945 or something i uh, to so the same analogy could be used for uh, the present movement in uh, like present day movement also like even if somebody steps down and uh, see, says to everyone that i am not the guru <laughs> then uh, they would have people it's very difficult to for the followers to accept that thing because they exactly. have worshiped them like that and uh, yes. that time yeah. also like a japanese emperor people start people tried to force him no 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 you should not tell everyone that you are not god you should accept that you are god because we have accepted you and worshiped you as god and everybody thinks that japanese are the best ones in, in the world they can never lose they are the superior to everyone else but now you are saying that we have lost the war it's uh, it's not we are not able to digest it so now so the same thing is there even if uh, somebody wants to step down and wants to declare that they are not the one they are not the like sakshadhari or these things 
but still they cannot do it so i totally reciprocate with you prabhu on this because i have seen people like in escon within escon and within organizations they want to step down, step down because of the politics going on because of the behind scenes whatever is going on but yes now they can't because they have been given a big responsibility and they, then they it's impossible for them i mean to step down and do do it it takes guts to accept the truth and just move on right life in spiritual life specifically so uh, i mean it, it takes a huge guts to do that so i mean if jay pataka yeah. stepped down and said i'm not a uttama adhikari and i'm just you know be- beginning my spiritual life imagine what would happen you know people would commit suicides <laughs> <laughs> yeah because they have been like, like bro i mean your storytelling skills everything is so super bro we can just let's go get hari bol yeah so we are secretary so, is like so enlightened us with all his great storytelling skills hari bol go ahead go ahead sorry sorry guys go ahead yeah so hello <laughs> who's yeah. here Yeah. Yeah, Prabhu with me only. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that is the problem, right? Vinayak Prabhu, if people are honest, when they came out and said, I'm not a qualified person, I made a mistake. And, you know, it's it seems like, you know, I should continue this as, until I die or something, you know? But the point is, Prabhu, they won't get, uh, I mean, they won't uh, go back to God, right? That's for sure. i mean they won't if they're not exactly what propada said if they're not following it they won't be able to do anything right prabhu yeah they're karmically the linked point. yeah yeah they're karm- yeah. karmically linked oh. together now yeah you know so either next life or next to next life they won't go back a to pure devot- it's the karmic it's the karmic yeah, pure devot- which they're taking yeah yeah a pure devotee is yeah. not karmically linked you know to anything is yeah well <laughs> spiritually linked Yeah I mean the, we're talking about the devotees who take initiation from Kanishta Adhikari gurus they have become karmically linked with these Kanishta gurus right like uh, the share of karma which does not get processed I mean it, it does get processed but you know they both continue Is that Ramachandra? Yeah, that's Yeah, me. yeah. Oh, you're back. Oh, my god. I was trying to reach you. Okay. <laughs> I've been here for the Is past minutes. You're in minutes. charge of this thing. You can't just Yeah, bro. You're there. the president. Please, president, please, yeah, please right. be there. Chairman, <laughs> so chairman you... of the board. So, yeah. I'm trying to get no, I'm trying to get more important guy. I'm just a simply a commentator. I'm not Yes. This is Anyways, your This is your program. Yes, so, bro, you, you have so something right to comment okay, upon good. this uh, this uh, discussion like uh, from japanese history no not okay. me okay so i'm sorry so are you yeah. contemplating what happens to jai pataka's disciples what happens to them yeah anyone like if they try to just uh, well they make some degree out. of krishna conscious advancement but it's very it's not a very large amount the bro, real but, advancement is when you surrender to the spiritual master but bro his point is valid like sorry bro so i don't talk to you his point is valid bro but it takes a lot of guts to accept the truth right when you are inside it and when you have the knowledge right but then to accept it it's very tough and then if you're going down on from your position and people will be like crying and dying like what is this happening our lives are gone his disciples will i mean they will fall down very badly so this well, before okay you're right yeah. you're absolutely right before 1970 if anyone had questioned guru meaning prabhupad he would have been completely they probably would have thrown him out of the temple acha if they questioned okay. prabhupad I I I took an issue in 1968 which is 2 years before 1970 actually about a year and a half because it was September and how about was the absolute there was absolutely no 
there was absolutely no scope for anyone disagreeing with Prabhupada or not surrendering to Prabhupada. And the story was, you surrender to your, you give your life and soul to the spiritual master. That's what I was taught. And I believed it from the start. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So you after 1970 yeah. is when things went haywire, because that's when the GBC began to try to make a dictatorship or a Vatican style dictatorship out of ISKCON. When I say Vatican, okay. so I mean like a church. What do you think, Ramachandra? Well, of course, that's what they have set up. And uh, I, I can see that more and more. Oh, and Prabhu, the more like, yes. Uh, I, want, I wanted to ask, like, what were the reaction of disciples when uh, Hamsa Dutta Prabhu stepped down? To who, which disciples? Uh, Hansadura wrote an apology. Hansadura, Prabhu's. Oh, Hansadura went ahead and became a guru. Uh, and Prabhupada criticized him because he even had his picture on the altar in Germany when Prabhupada was still alive. And Prabhupada said, That's not bona fide. You cannot put your picture on the altar in the presence of your guru. So he became a guru. He built up so many things as a guru. He did all sorts of stuff, a lot of it crazy. He put out yeah. record albums <laughs> with verses like, when I hear the holy name, I fall down like a cane. You know, I mean, uh, crazy stuff. But he was selling albums instead of books. So when he got a bunch of disciples, and when he fell down, I mean, he fell down by becoming a guru, but when he fell down further from becoming a guru, uh, that was the end of his being a guru. That was the end of it. I mean, what what is your real question? You said you're asking what happened when Hamza Judah fell down. Well, the question, he, he the was question never a guru to begin with. How, the, what happened how did to he the fall disciples? High enough to fall down. The question was like, what happened to the disciples? Oh, well, well, he, yeah. He, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I think after some time, Hansadura understood Prabhupada's order, and he uh, he told people to take shelter of Kirtananda at one time, and he, then after that, he realized even Kirtananda was not, uh, you know, a bona fide spiritual master, and then he realized, oh, Prabhupada never appointed any of us to be you know, successor Acharyas. Then he wrote a big letter with all his disciples' name and then, you know, apologies and this and that, right? That black book. Yeah. Have you seen it? No, no, Prabhu, you seen it? Of course. Yeah. And he made it publicly known that, you know, whatever he was doing was not actually what Prabhupada had and intended. And then all the other gurus rejected him. Exactly. Made his, uh, go ahead. He broke ranks with them, you know, so they yeah. demonized him or they, you know, they basically so, kicked his own. Yes. yes so the Prabhu. real question is, how did any of them become gurus? That's a big question, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Good. Well, how did they get appointed to be gurus? Who appointed them? Uh, yeah, some of these disciples I know of Hansaduda, uh, Prabhu, you know, uh, they, you know, they, I mean, it, it's very destructive to have a spiritual master who, you know, who, who was acting as a spiritual master and then he, he admits that he was not a spiritual master. It has a very destructive role in their spiritual lives. And a lot of people are not strong enough to carry on, you know, very uh, statistically, at least from what and I've seen, you know. Many of, I knew quite a number of his initiates. I would not say disciple is an actual term, but initiates, people he initiated, and they many of them went off to the Godi of Af, and a lot of them went off to other ISKCON gurus, so-called gurus. Yeah. So, yeah. But we're like, already dealing with a nightmare, nightmarishly horrible situation. Yeah. So nobody, nobody came to Prabhupada in spite of him uh, asking them to go to Prabhupada? Oh, yes, yes, they did. 
And this is where a weird terminology thing came in. I've been having a conflict with Bobby Heber oh, and yeah. his followers on the word rhythmic. Um, Who is Bobby Heber? Yeah, he, he, on the term rhythmic, uh, they love the term rhythmic. And I was trying to say, why do you love the term rhythmic, which was introduced by the person poisoning Prabhupada? Mm. Why don't you love the word officiating Acharya, which Prabhupada in July 20, in May 28th gave, he said, well, make some of you initiate, uh, officiating Acharyas. And Tamal says, do you mean Ritvik? Is that the same as Ritvik? And Tamal says, yes. And Prabhupada says, yes. And then on the July 9th conversation leading up to the Tamal's, July, Tamal's signed July 9th letter, he, Prabhupada says, I will make a, some of you officiating acharyas. And Tamal says, Does that mean rhythmic? So then Tamal takes over the word, takes over the whole letter, becomes the author of the letter, and calls the people to rhythmics instead of what Prabhupada said. Now, Bobby Hebert and his followers are completely disgusted with me for distinguishing between a, between the, uh, officiating Acharya and Ritvik. And why? Because they consider it's the same thing. And I say, excuse me, what is spoken by my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and what is spoken by Tamal, even if the dictionary would say it's the same thing, is coming from a different source. And it's not the same thing if it comes from a different source. So then some of Bobby Hebert's followers are um, went into a whole tailspin and came up with like 20 different quotes where it said the word Ritvik is used. First of all, the word Ritvik is not used, it's Ritvija, but it's also not in the verses or the, I'm sorry, Ramachandra, do you mind if I point this out? It's true, go ahead. What? Ramachandra? Is Ramachandra there? Rupa? Yeah, he's here. Okay. I was asking, Ramachandra, do you mind if I point that out? I said, sure. Oh, I didn't hear you. Okay, I don't want to take a much, much time on it, but the guy puts up a list of like 15 quotes from Prabhupada's books. Bobby Hebert says, oh, yes. See, Narnayan, you're wrong. He's right. And the guy says, the guy calls me a dirty Jew or something of that sort and then puts up those quotes. Uh, and I said, okay, you've got, this, you've got this racist guy. And then I checked out, I went to the book, book, books, the physical books, checked out the Sixth Canto, and not a single one of them had Ritvik. What did they have? This Ritvaja, Ritvik, Ritvaja is in the Sanskrit, but we already knew that. And I already said that clearly to everybody in that group. And so that Ritvaja uh, was stated, but it's not stated in the translation or the purport, which is all that I said. I said there was no example of Ritvik or anything related to Ritvik in the in the um, in the translations or the purports. And Ramachandra and I went over that as well, and so we were quite convinced of it to begin with. But anyhow, they said I'm wrong. He's right, and I'm wrong. So I mean, what can you do with that sort of mentality? So what do you think, Ramachandra? 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 Yeah, I'm just walking outside and sometimes I'm cutting out. So yeah, so we, yeah, we, we checked out the word. So it's not used in purport or uh, translations. That's exactly yeah, is it okay right. if you come in and become part of the meeting for sure? Are you are explaining it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm confirming no, no, I it. So, yeah. I, 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 I'm only doing this to support you. 
not instead <laughs> of you. Well, I'm here. So, yeah. So what's the next okay. topic for discussion? Besides Bobby okay, Hebert. So, I'm, I'm tired of Bobby Hebert. You know, I want to discuss, you know. Uh, okay. Well, anyhow, I, I was trying to see if there was some scope for us to collaborate with Bobby Hebert. But it appears that there probably isn't. Okay, let's he, let's put it to rest then. He, you know, he, let's he, not mention. He's still stuck stuck in the name. GBC mentality. Yes, and I don't, I don't want to. You know, Bobby Hebert. You know, I have some sentiments towards him, and you know, uh, he, what are they? What are your sentiments? That you know, he's he's. He wants ISKCON restored, and that is, you know, what he told well, me. I so, do too, and so well, do you. So, we're yeah. All serious too. So, so we're all three. So I agree. Yeah. So yeah. So we're agreeing, but you know, maybe he does not like you for some personal reason or that. It's no reason to, you know, like. No, no, uh, no, no, no. I don't know what so, his reason for not liking me is. So his reason for not yeah. liking me is people like Paranjan are not don't like me. People like so, Paranjan no. haven't liked me for decades. So no, so let's leave it at that. You. Indirectly, you're saying yeah. if he's not liking Nana and Prabhu, he's not liking what Prabhupada said, right? What, what Prabhupada said truthfully, right? Whatever he's rightly yeah. said, it not following that. So that's yeah. his problem. Exactly. Yeah. He, he yeah. disagrees. That's but anyhow, Ramachandra, I want to work closely with Bobby Hebert. Well, if he doesn't want to, then I think we should put a stop to it, or you should put a stop to it. I, I, yes, you know, so. I'm not going to. You know what I'm okay, saying? You, you, you I gotta, think it would also be nice if the three of us had an online conversation and or, or telephone conversation and tried to come to a happy agreement. <laughs> I'm very junior I, in this. You know, I I, I don't want to get involved in this. You know, God oh, brothers, you guys are much, much remember, senior and older to me, so you know well, I it's, can't really. It's not that. It's just that. Okay, Ramachandra, <laughs> do you think there's any scope of Bobby Hebert? Maybe and later. Us? Collaborating, maybe later in the future. Okay, then I've dropped Bobby Hebert for the time being. So I, uh, Prabhu, I remember Prabhupada saying one thing. I yes. just want one single devotee who's like very much. Uh, I mean, who's who's totally devoted to Krishna, like exactly what a pure devotee says, exactly, exactly. how he follows, exactly as a yeah. disciple. I just remember yeah. this one quote. If he doesn't want to uh, go with us, it's so it's his problem, bro. We are showing what Prabhupada wanted, right? He can have well, views, he, was, he can talk to us, but he will see. If he's against some person, it's his problem. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I had opened the door to a friendship and a collaboration because he's trying to create a rush. He's trying to deal with the GBC, which he feels, as do we, is bogus. I was hoping we'd be able to collaborate on the GBC issue. And maybe yes. we can in the future. Who knows? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Let's Sometimes put we have to walk walk walk. I don't want to quarrel yes, that's with it. Bobby Hubert. I yeah. like Bobby Hubert. I have nothing yeah. against him. Yeah. Sometimes you need to walk alone, Prabhu. Prabhupada always did this. He just walked yeah, alone. Yeah. If you can follow, follow. If you can't follow, that's your problem. Because it's truth coming from direct from Golukdham. He's written it. Krishna has dictated it. If you can't accept it, accept it. If you can't, that's your problem. He just, I think Prabhupada used to say it only twice and then he used to move on. So that's what we can do, yeah. Oh, that's a very good point. Okay, you so... With uh, that, Ramachandra? Yeah, let's, let's continue in the conversation. Okay, Ramachandra, I do not want to get into any clash with you yeah, over me too here. topic. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course not, though. So. Yeah, yeah, well, I was really hoping I, I was trying to... Be a nice we, guy we, with I a, understand, Narayan Prabhu. I understand. You don't have to go over things ten, ten hundred times. I actually understand. Okay. You know, I have a very cognitive mind. At least, maybe I can yeah, express I, myself. I thought but, we would, could do something nice. <laughs> yeah, it it right. takes some time. You know, many, uh, many things uh, take some time. You know, so well, let's okay, give it some fine. time. Stop, stop like nailing him or 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 you know uh, or no 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 not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. So let's put a rest to this. Uh, Haribo, it's not about devotee. naming something. It's not about saying something against him, right? It's what we are showing what Prabhupada said. And I mean, if you if you are against it, that's his problem, right? That's no, his, he's not oh, against it. Blame. He's not against yeah. Prabhupada's movement because if he was against Prabhupada's movement, he yeah. would have another guru or, or another, uh, you know, 
something he still what point bro uh, then what's the problem in connecting with no no bro on a mature level right just like mature individuals on mature philosophy what's the problem uh, that's exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, just keep aside your personal things and just have a mature talk right let's see what the conclusion comes out right who comes who comes exactly same what propat said exactly well the, the thing is we can continue what we are doing and hopefully exactly. the effect and the influence of what we're doing will influence others i guess yeah. i was too premature in thinking we could gather in people that in the past <coughs> um I I thought would be candidates but anyhow I guess I'm mistaken so that's fine we can do what we're doing and what we're doing is excellent yeah I believe I I so I think the understanding the sadanta is excellent the connection with prabhupada is excellent yeah so what do you think ramachandra yeah that is our strong motive once we start you know uh, diverting from that let people hear what we have to say let them agree with whatever we're presenting if they don't agree then let them do their what yeah. they think is right you know i mean we can i mean not everyone is going to accept what we are saying prabhupada as the shiksha and diksha guru gbs the direction of management you know not everyone is going to agree but the people who do agree or or are in line with what we are doing maybe sooner or later they will have a change of you know change of yeah, understanding it's very possible so yeah thanks so much under to you and everyone else on here I apologize for having put so much energy into talking yeah, about no need to. my beloved god brother Bobby Heber. No need to. He's no the person I've always wanted to be friends with because his initiated name is Vishwakarma and my title is Vishwakarma. Not yeah, Adam and Das Vishwakarma. Yeah. So I thought yeah. that would be a very nice bonding area. No issue. <laughs> so, okay. There's, there, okay. there's a pastime in it. in my bharat that one king had a similar name as another king you know uh, what was it uh, and the, this other devata was uh, you know named similar name and they fought you know for some time and one died so let's not pick that happen here <laughs> oh, no 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 we 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 are here for peace and love not for <laughs> yeah. any Of people. <laughs> I get bro, we have humbly. Sorry, I just, I, I think that what has essentially happened is that I have misunderstood. Yes. Everything. Anyways, I'm let's your, continue. I'm your Prabhu. humble servant. Try. Right. Yes. So, um, Vinay Prabhu, anything else, Prabhu? You've, uh, <laughs> you've raised some interesting questions and uh, observations. So, you asked about Hans uh-huh. Duda Prabhu. what's going on in japan yeah japan recently the former prime minister shot shot what about yeah. you prabhu i want news about you right. vinay prabhu is the next president of escon there hari bol what's what's the progress there uh, hari bol shinzo abe was left unconscious people, after apparently being shot while delivering a speech in the western city of nara on friday local media nara. reported nara Nara? Oh, wow, bro, you are so Nara much Nara. <laughs> Was he killed? <laughs> no, Nara, he yeah. is still alive, but uh, not showing any vital signs. He's fighting for his life. How did you know that that was going on? Yeah, one of my students told me. One of his students, bro, how are you? He told me, he, he was asking whether he went to Krishna Loka or not. <laughs> I told him he's just still alive. He's <laughs> still alive. He's <laughs> still in this planet. <laughs> are you seeing the chest? Ch- he was shot in the chest. Look at, look at Vinayak Prabhu's transcendental Prabhu past times. He's, he's telling his devotees, right? His disciples. right bro uh, not my disciple uh, yeah i also <laughs> wanted to ask this from narnar and prabhu like uh, if like if we are preaching somewhere and uh, if we are getting uh, some people in the movement then uh, what is the like ideal way for a devotee to like tell them can we address them as our students or what should we tell them like like students of well, shila prabhupad our yeah. students or prabhupad is the we... guru for everyone for the next 1000 right. years mm. let's say can we agree on that thought 
that Prabhupada yes, is the absolutely. spiritual master for everyone for the next 1,000 years. Yes. And if that is the case, then if someone comes to me, he can say to me, Oh, Nara Narayan Prabhu. And what will I say to him? I will say, if his name is James, Oh, James Prabhu. Why? Because I am the servant of Krishna. He is the servant of Krishna. When we say Prabhu, we're referring to each other as the part and parcel of Krishna. Yeah. In other words, that's the main thing. The jiva to jiva, that's what our, our istagosi is. We are meant in this form to address each other as Prabhu because, but whether we do or do not say Prabhu, the whole point is it's the jiva to jiva, not body to body, not Indian to Western, not this to that. You see, it's jiva to jiva. And that's what yeah. Prabhupada wanted us to do for Istagosti, is to discuss things between spirit souls. And so when I see you as spirit soul, then I will call you Prabhu. Why? Because spirit soul means part and parcel of Krishna. Krishna is my master, therefore you're my master if I call you Prabhu. You see? That's why we Prabhu. It's not just polite. Yeah. It's not just being polite. Yeah. It's categorically, if, it's technical. If, so Prabhu, like if we are talking, if we are talking like generally, then what is the suitable pronoun to use while talking so that it does not look uh, ourselves like not look else so that it does not increase our pride also and for others also. No, no, no. We have to it. always understand that our job, now supposing you are an officiating Acharya, initiating people to be Prabhupada's disciples in that a reformed and, re and re resuscitated <laughs> ISKCON. Yeah. If, if, if you're doing be. that, it's a good call. the guy wants to be initiated and says, Vinayak Prabhu, supposing you're the, the officiating Acharya, so Vinayak Prabhu, I would like to take initiation from Prabhupada through you. And you say, well, yes, so somebody Prabhu, that can be done. We can keep Prabhupada at the absolute center at all times. What do you think, Ramachandra? Yeah, oh. like we can we can keep and we are keeping right now. And uh, I I wish to ask this, just like uh, if, if we are having some kind of discussion on Bhagavad Gita or we are give, giving some class, then the people who are attending our class. So, what is the suitable pronoun, like uh, pronoun, we should use for them? To whom? To you or them? Or oh, them, them, them. Students, oh, they oh, are them? sadhakas under you, right? They are sadhakas under you. Oh. You can take them direct to Prabhupada, right? Exactly. Uh, Ramachandra, is Ramachandra there? I'm yeah. here. Yes. Uh, Ramachandra, yes. <coughs> in your yes. history of study, what did Prabhupada do? I mean, when he talked to somebody in the class, what, how would he address them? He was very nice to the people, very nice to guests. And uh, he, yeah. he, he never considered anyone to be his disciple. First of all, he, yeah. he, he barely made that point. You know, sometimes he did for obvious reasons, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. for example, that uh, this part of, you know, the founder Acharya position. He did not have to state that, but because his disciples were, you know, who they were, he had to say it, you know. Yes. <laughs> so the so we, we say Prabhu to each other, and then when, when we were just Srila Prabhupada, we say Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Or in the earlier days, Swamiji, he would say Srila Prabhupada. He would say yes. So we address him by his title, Prabhupada, and that, and that acknowledge that that person is talking to the spiritual master. But when we talk, we're not a Prabhupada. We're not a spiritual master. We are just like them, servant of the spiritual master. You can be a viva medium, Prabhu. That's it. You're a viva medium. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So we should try to think like that. <coughs> but 
we should we can't give ourselves if you say well are you a, i need a diksha guru are you my shiksha guru no diksha guru shiksha guru that's a well, ramachandra could you explain that the shiksha guru diksha guru well if it's pretty simple if if we're getting knowledge from Prabhupada's books, what gives us any position? We're yes, getting knowledge exactly. from Prabhupada's books. Everything we're getting from Srila Prabhupada, so what makes us any authority in anyone's life? You know, maybe we can, you know, give them some, uh, you know, some uh, realizations or not even that, you know, we should tell them to read Prabhupada's books. But wouldn't you say that the word Shiksha Guru for our purposes in this country, is largely meaningless and essentially yeah. potentially harmful. Yes, it is because it's it's uh, it's giving some position to some unqualified person who is not an Uttama Adhikari. It's very dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Shiksha Guru, according to well, Ramachandra, you and I went researching, right? Didn't we find that Prabhupada said? And I mean, there's different ways of addressing the word. Shiksha Guru, obviously. But if what didn't Prabhupada say that in essence the Shiksha and Diksha Guru must both be from the spiritual platform? Yeah, meaning Uttama Krishna. Uttama, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Uttama yeah. So yeah, it's really the simple. real so meaning of Shiksha Guru is that that's the person that introduces you to Krishna consciousness, and the Diksha Guru yeah. is the person that initiates you. So that can be a that must be a pure devotee. Vinayak Prabhu can address him as a god brother, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's a nice way to brother. Do it. You're like a yeah, god excellent. brother. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The minute you tell say that somebody is your Shiksha Guru who is not an ordinary human being, you <laughs> already Good destroyed the validity and the purity and the 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 wonderfulness of the term Shiksha Guru. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one. Di- the, I think we hold the position in this Istagosi yes. that there's only going to be one Diksha Guru for the Golden Age of Kali, and that's Srila Prabhupada. For the next 10,000 years, Prabhu. Yes, for the next 10,000 years. What did I say? So, did I say something else? Anyhow, yes, for the next 10,000 years, is only Srila Prabhupada is the Diksha Guru. So and I therefore, probably... sh- only yeah. Srila Prabhupada is a Shiksha Guru. Therefore, throw the word Shiksha Guru out because it's not required. We don't need Shiksha Guru because the word Shiksha Guru occurred in the days when there were multiple pure devotees on the planet, right? Yeah. There, there were Swami. lots of them in the time yeah. of Lord Chaitanya. So yeah. a person can go and say, Jiva Goswami is my Shiksha Guru, but 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 Rupa Goswami is my Diksha Guru. They can say like that. But bro, I'm really happy that Vinayak Prabhu is preaching a lot in Japan and he's got I'm not, a, a, not a lot. Of, I'm not even, Krishna's I'm not able working. to make a sincere single but, sincere. But, but that has nothing to do with Shiksha Guru. That in Shiksha Guru they come to Yeah, basically they are getting serious for reading books. Whoever he Gordon preaches to should call him Prabhu, and to whoever he preaches to, he should also call Prabhu. So, like, uh, gen- yeah, like philosophically, I can understand Prabhu, but if I, yes. if we are doing this kind of general conversation, and if I if I have to like uh, uh, if I have to point towards like if I am talking to you about something regarding uh, anything, and if I in the conversation, I have to point towards the people whom uh, who came to Krishna consciousness through my programs. So, how should I call them? Like as uh, as as my students or as as uh, Prabhupada's oh, 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 students? I'm not sure. Who is who is uh, more? Ramchandra Prabhu, can you explain? Who him? is there before you are, or after you are? She's uh, saying he's saying if you have um, students. Are are you their teacher or is Prabhupada the teacher? Um, no, no, not not that, not that. But uh, no, no. like, like if uh, 
if we are having just like i am having a conversation with narnara and prabhu and within a conversation i would like to uh, use i i am discussing about the people whom i have bring to krishna consciousness so how should i use a proper pronoun to address them like should i call them my students or should i call them the people i bring to krishna consciousness movement well, so, if you're talking, nice. if you're talking yeah. about yeah. someone like myself or somebody yeah. else who's you could say senior godbrother that's what prabhupada exactly. had us say in terms of people i don't quite follow your next point though uh, so prabhu uh, you maybe i mean it's not i who has answered the explain the point prabhu nanan prabhu has answered you can address yourself as their god brother right not as a guru or not as a exactly I mean, no, i'm not addressing teacher. that like that also and say if you're uh, preaching to someone and they pick, suppose you meet a person in the street they come into the temple they hear from you you preach to them you read to them from the gita you have them read from the gita to you you have to take them under your wing as a neophyte as a senior devotee to a neophyte he should say he's my senior devotee senior god brother god brother exactly yeah, yeah. so because uh, vinayak prabhu is doing a recommendable job i mean i mean i'm very happy that yeah. prabhu you're preaching i am not on that platform i want to reach i've been trying it for, from various years but prabhu you're doing a tremendous job prabhu when i prove but exactly. yeah totally just to just tell them yeah you are god brilliant yeah book up so see, so vinayak is his senior senior god brother of those who exactly. wish to surrender to prabhupada exactly. why god brother yeah. because when if a if the person becomes initiated and then ek is initiated then you'll be god brothers equally god brothers as disciples of prabhupada right but one is senior god brother so that means what people like to say shiksha guru really is your mentor a person who guides you towards i i like to say that when in 1968 I guess or 67 68 when I wanted to move into the San Francisco temple the hardly anybody there and I sat down with a devotee named Vishnu John who became quite famous for chanting as time went on and he became my senior godbrother I'm sitting there he just was initiated 6 months before and I am not initiated at all and he's showing me books and he's reading to me and he didn't know how to pronounce it even the shrimad bhagavatam like that this is john and then he said karuna daka shayi vishnu garo daka shayi vishnu maha vishnu that's how he would say i like to say that because that's my first and when i listened to him i said he's my teacher now I accept what he's saying and I accept that the two way he said it I don't any more I think Gobra Daka Shai Vishnu or Maha Vishnu I I know how to do that but at the same time at the, at that time I had no idea of what is he talking about and he would take the Bhagavatam and he point the pictures of Vishnu in it the first canto of Prabhupada's Gita Bhagavatam that he brought from India so I'm looking at the pictures on the cover and in the pictures in the book and i'm accepting that from him so that's senior god brother means vishnu john was my senior god brother 6 months he joined before me maybe 8 months he joined before i did is that a marvelous so that's Jai. that's yeah. the relationship so supposing vinayak is there he's very senior compared to vishnu john compared to me so whoever he says they should accept that he is telling he is their he is their senior god brother explaining the uh, shastra not shiksha guru or something totally religious sounding you know because shiksha guru really is a 
more of a religious term, like a category, like a priest in the Catholic Church or a monsignor in the Catholic Church or some sort of person with a status and that's the name is Shiksha. No, that is not the way our philosophy works. Anyhow, Ramachandra, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. Any status, people wanting status or, you know, or this becomes very dangerous because we have seen that this is the, one of the main problems, status is, or trying to be a guru or whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry? I couldn't quite understand you, what you said. So Ron and Prabhu wants to say this, that people become gurus and then they call themselves guru, that we are the next guru and then they make a group and then things happen. So it's very exactly. dangerous. It's very dangerous, yeah. So he's saying that it's very dangerous rather than call yourself God brother. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Yes, yeah, we're all God brothers. Who is our spiritual master is Prabhupada, not him, 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 or him. Or yeah, her, I, for that matter. No, Prabhupada is our spiritual master. And we need to stick with that. I don't know what the other people, like Bobby Hebert or anybody, believe in this regard. But we do need to stick with Prabhupada as being the spiritual master, our spiritual master. And anybody who joins ISKCON becomes their spiritual master. Not that there's some intermediary spiritual master between us and Prabhupada or between if there's some ISKCON guru, is he directly dealing with Krishna or is he supposedly dealing with Prabhupada? I mean, there's no indication that he has any connection to Prabhupada. So how is he representing Prabhupada if he doesn't have a connection to Prabhupada? He's just been appointed, you see. He maybe never met Prabhupada. Does it make sense? Ramachandra, what do you think? Yes, it makes sense, yes. Well, keep going. I'd like to, you're in charge, so why don't you do some more speaking? Let's see, we have about 15 minutes or 14 minutes. Yes, yeah, so um, First of all, I'm very who, happy to connect with you guys. Bro. After so many days, it's like... Well, the meeting has been reduced to two days a week. So if you want to do one day, you're certainly welcome I'll to... I'll do. You'll Saturdays do, but, you know... Free. Yeah, Prabhu, I can do, but... Then yeah, coordinate sorry. with me. Yes, yeah, then coordinate with me. And so then, why you know, don't we... Why don't we... If Finnick comes on, why don't we... I know Finnick. Mohit. If Mohit Prabhu. comes on... Why don't we make it three days a week? Go, yeah, go for three days, bro. I'll take the seva. Yeah, bro. You so. will? Okay. Of course, okay. man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good, Prabhu. So, um, when we started out, see. we did the seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very, <laughs> satisfi very satisfying. Very um, satisfying. Um, <laughs> <Mohit Prabhu. laughs> What, 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 can try seven days. Uh, Ramachandra <laughs> has a very busy schedule and it's hard for him to do it more than one day a week. Yeah, so Mohit, uh, if you were, if Friday for us would be Saturday for you, okay? Done, done. So, okay, so, um, and, so and Saturday for us will be Is Sunday Mohit for you. Is doing it on Wednesday? No, no, he's going to be doing it oh, on Friday or Saturday for us. Yeah, Why exactly. No, because that's when he can do it. Meaning oh, that when oh, he can I host see. the meeting. That's you, yes. That's not when you yeah. can do it. Okay, good. We'll yeah. work it out with him. Make it happen. Yes. So, so, so anyone who's watching, if they'd like to participate Friday or Saturday, uh, what is it, USA, Mohit Prabhu can, and Mohit Prabhu will be hosting. And then please sure. join the group. So Mohit Prabhu will send the link. That would be fantastic. And then yeah. what we're meantime, doing is you know, of incredible importance, and I don't want to see anything fall between the cracks of the you know fall anything. I don't want us to miss a single bet because we need to restore ISKCON for the next ten thousand years with Prabhupada in the center. That has to be there. Then we're talking about a fairly uh, unusual idea, which is that Prabhupada. How do we have kirtan from the pure devotee's lips?
for 10,000 years from his recordings. Because when you stop to think of it, Prabhupada in his recordings are not different. Are we going to say that if we listen to a recording or listen to a recording of a dead person, or are we saying, no, an eternal person who is chanting through the medium of a recording? But from Krishna Loka, is that too tough to handle, Mohit? Not at all, bro. You like Not that? At all. Of course, very so, yeah. Okay, so we're saying that Prabhupada's kirtan is alive and well. Prabhupada is alive and well. Iskon is alive and well. Now, even if we cannot take over, I would say that if we get enough people understanding what we're doing through yeah. Ramachandra's guidance and my assistance, that, uh, that whatever we're doing will produce the effect of people understanding that ISKCON does not belong to the GBC. And if we have at the same time have a war going on to separate, legally separate and make absolutely clear that the GBC does not have a legal connection to ISKCON, therefore it was piracy from the beginning. From, 19, from the minute they did not accept it, to be elected as GBC, they became thieves. They took over forcefully. They took over the movement forcibly from Prabhupada and seven years later, they completed, probably six years later, they started poisoning to death. So you can see from the time that Prabhupada created the GBC, six years later, they were poisoning him to death so that they could become gurus above and beyond Prabhupada. Just imagine. What do you think, Ramachandra? I mean, absolutely, 1970. I mean, drugging Prabhupada, I mean, it's Prabhu, I, th I think it's impossible for anyone it's, to drug him. He accepted it. It was, he knew when he wanted to go, right, from his material no, not body. Not really, no, not at all. He didn't. He knew when they wanted him to go. Acha, ah, this is also a good point. Yeah, bro. Okay, I can give you an example from Shastra. Uh, Haridas Thakur was beaten. He was Muslim. He was beaten by the Muslim magistrate through twenty-four marketplaces by professional beaters. I mean, they mm. were executioners, and through twenty-four yeah. marketplaces meant this guy is being exposed for being a anti-Muslim rascal and he is going to be beaten here in that marketplace and that marketplace and that one, 22 mm. marketplaces. So they beat yeah. him. Then at the end, Haridas didn't look at all hard. And they said to him, Haridas, why are you doing this to us? And Haridas is a saint. Actually, he's Lord Brahma, but he was playing the saintly role. And he said, what, what am I doing to you? He said, we have beat you through the marketplaces. You were supposed to die five marketplaces ago, but you didn't. You're still alive and you don't even look harmed. They will say that they will say that we did not beat you hard enough, and that's why you're still alive. That's what they will say to us. And then we will be get killed for not having for having sympathized with a Muslim who became a Hindu. Or whatever, you know, that's their Vaishnav. That's what they will say. So, do you know what Haridas said? Do you know? Yes, sir. Yes? What did he yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, bro. No, go ahead. You say. Bro, you, you please, please go ahead. I okay. want to listen. It. Said, if I you want me to die for a minute, it, if my being alive is inconveniencing you even for a minute, then I will die immediately. But Here he is Lord Brahma, yeah. and he falls down on the ground, apparently Achha. dead. So here, Achha. mission accomplished for the beaters, right? Achha. So then people said, okay, we the Muslims take the view very differently than the Vaishnavas, that the Ganges, that the river, if you throw a body of a Muslim into the river, 
it means his soul will wander forever. So that's what they wanted to have happen to the renegade Muslim Haridas. So they picked them, they tried to say, okay, let's pick him up and throw him into the river. The river right nearby happened to be the Ganges. And they tried to pick him up. But this is Brahma. He's heavier than any heavy thing in the entire universe. Mm. Here he was. Yeah. Yeah, he's heavier than the universe itself. But to speak of a person in the universe, they could not pick him up at all. They, no matter what they did, little skinny guy, they couldn't pry him off the ground. Mm. So finally, they were saying, oh, this is, they were lamenting again. So they hired us and gave them the capacity to pick him up and throw him in the Ganges. Of course, they thought that means his soul will wander forever. But when you throw someone in the Ganges, who was a Vaishnava, he came to life. He came conscious again. And he, he up and he began swimming and he swam across the river to the other side of the Ganges and he came out exhausted and lay down on the beach on the sand. As he did, he began to dream. And when he dreamed, he saw Lord Chaitanya coming towards him. And then in his dream, he said to Lord Chaitanya, Hi, Lord Chaitanya said, and how are you, how are you, Haridas? And he says, I don't understand that they were beating me like anything, but I did not suffer. He said, how come I don't have any marks on my body of having been whipped and whipped and beat with sticks and iron rods or whatever they were beating him with? Little skinny guy, Muslim, little skinny Muslim guy, not like Burma, his foreheads. And he said, how is it possible that I did not experience any marks on my body? You know what happened next, Prabhu? What happened? Tell me. I, I want to listen from your mouth, bro. Go ahead. Yeah. It's in very interesting. Lord Chaitanya yeah. turned and he yeah. had taken all the beating on his own back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hari Isn't that amazing? Hari, 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 Hari. We can every day have such stories from you, bro. At the end of the meeting, five, ten minutes. It's very, I mean, enriching and very helpful for me. I mean, after so many days, I'm yeah. hearing some great stories. Yeah. Well, we need to go ahead. I had, we missed a couple of meetings because my daughter had her on the 30th of, yeah. of, of, of June. June. On June 30th, she had her 12th birthday. And we had Are to go to, apparently, time? The moon at that particular time was totally agitated all over the place. So it made it very, very difficult for us to pull it off. And exactly. it went on again, one day skipped. And then the next day, uh, another party for her for birthday. But anyhow, that's now completed. So we're back on schedule. And I apologize for not having been present during those two times. No issues. No. But no. I do apologize no. because I'm your... Because I am your eternal servant. Please I'm not any master. Me. I'm your servant. Because I'm your servant, then I must serve. Not be big chop. Oh, I had my daughter's birthday. Ha. So <laughs> you guys didn't have a meeting. Ha, ha, ha. Not like that. I am your servant, and I feel very badly that I missed those meetings. But okay, it's a great, so that's, I mean, to become your daughter, Prabhu, to become daughter of Nana and Prabhu and... Mataji, it's like yeah. probably elevated soul. She's she's done elevated things in the past life. That's why she born to you guys and support. We you. are thinking like that. Yeah. It, it, this yeah. Kali Yuga is very ugly, but we are thinking mm -hmm. that if a few people are born to be devotees, no matter how much difficulty they may have as they grow up, if they do have difficulty, that this will have a effect of saving the human race somehow or other. Haribo. If you have a child uh, that from... is born yeah. to be a devotee, then that will save the human race, even if it doesn't necessarily look that way. Yeah. Yes, at all. 
yeah yes bro i'm Mohit Prabhu. thinking we can have a session like nana i'm bro can tell stories like what five minute stories he, he has told sure we sure. can make a session on this but it's very important make i mean the it program can happen. encourage yeah uh, make now, the program happen can... ramachandra are you there yeah yes i'm here mohit prabhu okay, is saying we don't have your picture listening. you know i know i'm okay. i'm, I'm at work you... so i oh, was thinking are? prabhu that yep huh Yes, yes, no Mohit, Mohit, Prabhu, go ahead. Yes. So I was thinking, Prabhu, we can make short stories, like short stories by sure. Nana and Prabhu, like five ten minutes. Short stories by Nana and Prabhu at the end of the session or at the YouTube channel, we can do that. It would be great, Prabhu. I mean, I it's your, very good. I am I, Nana and Das Vishwakarma, am your eternal servant. So whatever you desire from me, I cannot say no. So make it happen, you know. Whatever you know, you want, yeah. you, you know, Narayan. Put it together. Make now. it happen. Make it yeah. happen. I won't make it happen because I'm your servant. But if you <laughs> ask me, hey, servant, <laughs> tell me a story, then I will tell the story. Uh, by the way, Ramachandra, do you, yes. are you there? Yeah. Yes. Are you there? Yes. It's absolutely vital that I have a short conversation with you after this meeting. Is that possible? Sure. Yes, I'll call you immediately. You'll right call now, me, right? You'll call me. It's ten me. o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The meeting's okay. over. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Before we say the meeting's over, is there anybody? What, Ramachandra? We can't no leave question. the meeting until you have checked the uh, people. Oh, right? I checked it already. Oh, I checked. Yeah. Nobody so today. Nope. No, nobody nothing today. today. Okay. No, no. Nice people are watching. That's because of I our brought. lack of fidelity. We're unfaithful. Therefore, they did not come. Okay, okay. I'm signing off. Okay, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krish